a special edition of Skill Talk at Morehouse College. Yeah. <laughs> My name is Dr. Michelle B. Lee, the founder of Soft Skills, and Al Duncan. <laughs> oh, man. What you got today is Valentine's Day. It's Black History Month. We're going to say the B stands for uh, Black History Month. That's Dr. Michelle B. Lee. And happy Valentine's Day to you. Well, thank you. <laughs> Same to you. Thank you. I appreciate it. So I know we're going to have some fun. We had a lot of fun with the students that were here today. Uh, some of them had to leave early. And guess what? They even came back. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. That's how you know we was putting it down, having a lot of fun. And I know that you had some things that really stuck out to you. Based on what we were talking about today, you were like, he was like, Al, you know, let's 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 go over some of those things and talk about them. So, what are we gonna talk about today? Well, Al, something that really stood out today mm -hmm. when you were talking about put yourself in an employer's place. Mm -hmm. That's what you're around. Mm -hmm. Yes, and what they, what you think they would be looking for instead of you thinking about what the employer might be looking for. Mm -hmm. um, and something that popped in my mind was, wow. A story that I could tell to give the employer information about me. Gotcha. Okay. So the the reason she thought about this is because I say to students all the time, look, it's one thing to say what you want, but the real question is, do you understand what the employer is looking for? Because employers are always looking for a certain thing. So how can you sell yourself or sell your abilities or sell yourself on a position or, or make sure you get the job or the promotion if you don't really understand what the employer wants or you don't have a story that's going to deliver what he or she wants? And so what you're saying is you have something that can do that. You have something, you have a story that you use in your past that actually worked out good. Yes. Okay. And you know, my thing is never discount any of your experiences. Say it again. Say, say that one more time. Say it for one more time. Never what? Never discount any of your experiences because you do not know what's going to get you the job. Mm -hmm. And the story that I have is everybody knows I've been at Los Alamos National Laboratory for 25 years. Come this month. And how did I get into the laboratory? Well, I was filling out an application. Okay. And at that time, I was 18 years old, and I the only jobs that I had was a newspaper route that I had from fifth grade. I was okay. 11 years old, had it for seven years. I had worked at Taco Bell. Okay. And I was a sweeper girl. No, oh, hold on, let's run it down. You, you had a newspaper route. Yes. Since you were 11. 11 years old. Okay. And you try to work at Los Alamos National Lab, and this, this is your job experience. Newspaper route. Okay. I had a newspaper route, so that was my very first job. That started at 11. Okay. Well, she started working early, didn't she? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's how you know. That's how you know Dr. Lee is about it. She's like, I'm going to get it. <laughs> okay. Started at 11. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then, and then you worked at where? Taco Bell? Taco Bell. I okay. had that job. Um, Yo, Carol, Taco Bell. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, Taco Bell had it in high school. Okay. And in high school, I was a sweeper girl at an elementary school. Sweeping classrooms. Sweeping the classroom after everybody left the show. Yes. The classroom. Okay, I got it. the classroom. Okay, and so you want to take these three job experiences and you're going to find a way to parlay them into a job at Los Alamos National Lab? I, was I, a, I got to hear this. Yeah, I was just filling out an application. <laughs> okay. So at that time, I guess these are obsolete, so I'm dating myself. That's all right. I was typing my application. That's he had a little okay. correction page. <laughs> okay. And I put down, I was wondering. Should I put down a newspaper route? You know, it's a job. So I'm putting down my job experience. Okay. So I did put it down. I put down a newspaper route, and but I was, you know, kind of torn. Mm -hmm. You know, does that really mean anything? No. Then I put the sweeper girl, and I put Taco Bell. Okay. Okay. Right. And then newspaper route, I, I guess you could say I was kind of like employed by for myself. Gotcha. I, got I had to go and collect my the, money. You on the bike. No, I wasn't on a bike. I actually uh, was walking. Okay. And carried about 50 papers on my back Sunday. And I had a newspaper card. I can okay. tell you a lot of okay. stories. But we're talking about 365 days a year for seven years. You can I mean, start at 11? Starting at 11. Wow, okay. All right. I, I'm, seeing, I'm seeing the picture here. I, I am starting to imagine if, if I was an employer and you started saying this, I'm already like, hmm, that's very interesting. You start at 11. 
but 265 I, I didn't, days a year. Yes, I didn't. It was just on an application. That's all you had on there, okay? It's, you know, so it's just an internship. I'm trying right. to get an internship at Los Alamos. I just completed my freshman year at Grambling State University. Okay, all right. So I got the job. Okay. And one day we were sitting at lunch, and I was talking to my mentor, and there was other people around, and it came up about all the applicants that right. applied for the job. And I, at that time, I learned that some of the applicants had 4.0s. I had a 3. Point gotcha. something. I'm not going to tell all that, but you know. And I said 4.0, oh, and I got selected, mm -hmm. and I didn't have a 4.0. And so I asked my mentor. I said, why did you select me? Okay. And he said, and these are his exact words, but I don't think this is a word. Anybody that had a newspaper around for seven years has stickability. <laughs> stickability. That's you what he that? said. He said stickability. Oh, it's, okay, stickability. So he I don't hired know if that's me a word because be, it's not a word. Okay. <laughs> he hired me because of my newspaper route. So stickability, that's like... <laughs> Diligence, in, in persistence, yes. endurance. Yeah, 300. Okay. And so what he picked out of that job is he said, you are a hard worker. Gotcha. You are a hard worker because I could have hired somebody with a 4.0, but when things get tough, mm -hmm. will they quit? Right. And he saw that. With that that experience, that if it got tough, that I would I would work through it. Work through it anyway. So in other words, out of all these applicants, even though some of them have 4.0s, mm -hmm. the thing that really got her hired is the thing, same thing we're always talking about. Those are where your soft skills. Soft skills. Even in a simple experience such as having a newspaper route, the thing that people went and spotted were her soft skills. And he called it stickability, but you know what that is. That's persistence, diligence, grit, determination, uh, the ability to keep going, time management, because you showed up. And, and, and if you kept the job for that long, that means you were delivering the papers on time too, right? That, that's correct. So, so, so there's a valuable lesson right there. And that is, that's why you're saying don't discount any experience, because when you're sitting in a job interview or an employer is really judging you and trying to determine whether or not you're the one or they're trying to break the tie. You know, i got all these students. They got 4.0s, students from the same school. They got similar disciplines, similar GPAs, uh, similar majors. How are we going to break the tie? I am telling you, it almost always comes down to a matter of soft skills. And this is why you don't discredit your, discredit your experiences because soft skills pop up in everyday life. And what you got to be able to do is showcase them. Okay, so just by listening, uh, it's, it's, even nowadays, just by listening, it, you can do even better than that. That's why you watch the shows like Skill Talk because we're showing you how you can even do better than she did because we want you to upgrade, not just list it, but in the interview for the internship or the job, what you want to do is highlight that, highlight that stuff because soft skills are transferable. In other words, you could have just as easily said, you know, let me tell you a little bit about myself. Let me tell you what I did and talk to him about the paper route. And by you telling a story like that, it starts to show that you have this hard work, determination, diligence, time management, and that you're willing to see a, a job through and actually have it done and completed to fruition. And it also shows that some other employer must have thought a whole lot about you. Because I'm telling you, working with somebody that's 11, <laughs> your favorite route, come on. I was great. I remember when the uh, district manager for the newspaper route, it was actually Rocky Mountain News, which no longer exists. Okay. Uh, the day that I quit the route, ooh, I was so happy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I was, yes. Um, he was very sad to see me go mm. because I took that job and I perfected it. The neighbors, Every paper that I threw, I made sure that when they opened their door, they picked their paper up. So I, I did I did a great job with that. Yeah, with that's paper so And it was on time. I was on time. And I had some also embarrassing moments, like when it snowed. Um, what happened when it snowed? Well, they're late delivering the paper. Okay. I'm late trying to get the paper out. And see, there was a thing. I would try to get the paper out, deliver all my papers before school. I got you. And then, school started, yeah, sense. so my classmates sometimes saw me out there with a dog, walking the dog. I'm, I'm um, 
multitasking, throwing the paper. We saw you this morning throwing those papers. There we go. Haters gonna hate. Even at, even at 11, 12, 13 years old, that's what they're going to do. They're mad because you're doing hard work. Well, no, I guess it might have been sort of like, Weird. at that time, like embarrassing or whatever. Embarrassing who to you? Well, it wasn't to me. Well, I don't know. I might have been embarrassed because like, I didn't want, especially when I had it in high school. Right. You see, that's because people love to make fun of you for doing the right thing. They, they do, okay? And so, if, when you're working hard and you're doing what you're supposed to do and you're about your business, about your dream, whether regardless of what it is, guarantee somebody going to have something to say. And as you can see, it doesn't matter how old or how young you are. Somebody around you will find a way to ridicule you. And you know what? Who cares? Because once again, she's working on her soft skills. She's building her whole story that she's going to use that's going to carry her to further opportunities in life. So remember that, and I always say that anyway, there's a Dunkin' Nugget for you. A person's definition of you does not define you. Just because somebody says something is or is not true, or because they want to make fun or laugh because you're out there delivering their papers before school, who cares? That's not what counts. What counts is what you wanted to do, and you just said you wasn't embarrassed, so that's all that counts. Yeah, I wasn't embarrassed, <laughs> and then it also taught me when I think about uh, my experience throwing papers, the interactions that I had with the customers when mm. I had to go collect the money at the end of the month for the papers. Okay. And then that kind of so taught me a lot. Now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. I, had to, I had to collect the money and then I had to pay <laughs> okay. you know, for the papers. Right. And I was um I had some change in my pocket. You did you had a little money? A I little change? My, okay. My, my parents were happy because now I'm buying my school clothes, I'm buying my school lunch. All right. You okay. know, I was I was independent. That's nice. <laughs> That's good. So you made a little bit of money off of that, and you were able to not only develop your soft skills, but you worked on your financial skills as well. Yes, and then it okay. also um, taught me a lot of stuff. Like I didn't want to deal with business because you know it just wasn't all roses. I would go. I would have to go to some uh, people's houses mm -hmm. like maybe five times and collect five dollars and fifty cents okay. for the month. Oh my God! For thirty papers. And you can't get it out of it. And, see, and here you are, a young lady trying to get money from some adults, but you still had to do it. So that's interesting. So even by having that one opportunity right there, she began to find out some things she may or may not like to do in her particular career. So that's another reason that you want to capitalize on experiences like that. That's interesting. That's yes. a little side lesson that comes out of that, huh? Yes. So it's just like when anything you do, you look at the, the, the soft skills. That's soft, true. soft skills are embedded in everything. That they you are. Do. Now I'll tell you something else I'm thinking about too is that you just got finished saying that when you got ready to leave, your boss was upset, not happy. Oh yeah, the, the manager, he was very, because he, he lost a he good, lost a good employee. employee. Now you see that? Now y'all know a whole lot of folks get fired and everybody doing the happy dance. The straight happy feet. As soon as they get fired, the boss, the, the, the boss gets rid of them or the manager, the, 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 their co-workers are happy, boss is happy, they're like, boom, yes, this person is gone. But what happens is, is that soft skills, when you really apply them correctly and you have them in abundance, that makes people very sad to see you when you go. And that's that's what you want. You always want people wanting more. So that's a good thing right there. Yes. And I guess with that, Al, I think we should wrap it up. You think we should wrap it up? Okay, that's okay. good. Yeah. So, so you know, uh, we had a great time once again. Like I said, I had a whole bunch of fun at Morehouse. We got the whole, uh, we got an annual workshop coming up. We're excited about that. People going to be showing up for that. Yes. Yeah. So this weekend... This weekend. Atlanta, Is Georgia. It? It's the third area. Yep. That's Marriott right. Marquis. <laughs> As building blocks for success is a theme. Building blocks for success. Soft yeah. skills are the building blocks for success. I'm with that. Makes yeah. sense to me. Okay, good. Okay. So you know what? We here. Where we at again? Uh oh. <laughs> yeah. house. That's right. Four so house. you know what? <laughs> Uh, we had a good time. You know, y'all going to see and hear from us again very soon. Uh, my name is Al Duncan. On behalf of Dr. Michelle B. Lee, I uh, want to say thank you for tuning in. Uh, I'm sure you're going to tune in next time. You want to know what we're going to talk about? <laughs> we're going to tell them? Can't tell them. <laughs> we can't do it. You got to tune into the next episode if you want to find out. So we look forward to seeing you then. Uh, and until then, be safe, be well, and be blessed. Duncan Nuggets. Boom.